Next, I'm going to tell you about a study which points out the immense value of visual images for laying down memories. And you can leverage this information. And this involves both the taking of photographs, something that's actually quite easy, easily done these days with your phone, as well as your ability to take mental photographs by literally snapping your eyelids shut. So I just briefly want to describe this paper because it provides a tool that you can leverage in your attempt to learn and remember things better. The title of this paper is Photographic Memory, the Effects of Our Volitional Photo Taking on Memory for Visual and Auditory Aspects of an Experience. I really like this paper because it refers to photographic memory, not in the context of photographic memory that we normally hear about where people are truly photographic, look at a page and somehow absorb all that information and commit it to memory, but rather the use of camera photographs or the use of mental camera photographs, literally looking at something and deciding blink and snapping a, so to speak, snapping a snapshot of whatever it is that you were looking at and remembering the content. The reason I like this paper and the reason I'm attracted to this issue of mental snapshots is this is something that I've been doing since I was a kid. I don't know why I started doing it, but every once in a while, I would say maybe twice a year, I would look at something and decide to just snap a mental snapshot of it. And I've maintained very clear memories of those visual scenes. Two years ago, I was in an Uber and I looked out the window and it was a street scene. I was actually in New York at the time. And I decided for reasons that are still unclear to me to take a mental snapshot of this city street image, even though nothing interesting in particular was happening. And um, I do recall that there was a guy wearing a yellow shirt, walking, there was some construction, et cetera. I can still see that image in my mind's eye because I took this mental snapshot. This paper addresses whether or not this mental snapshotting thing is real. And this is something that I think a lot of people uh, will resonate with, whether or not the constant taking of pictures on our phones or with other devices is either improving or degrading our memory. You can imagine an argument for both. A lot of people are taking pictures that they never look at again. And so in a sense, they're outsourcing their, me their visual memory of events into their phone or to some other device. And they're not ever accessing the actual image and they're not looking at it, right? You're not printing out those photos. You're not scanning through your phone again. Sometimes you might do that, but most of the time people don't. Most of the photographs that people are taking, they're not revisiting again. So the motivation for this study was that previous experiments had shown that if people take photos of a scene or a person or an object, that they are actually less good at remembering the details of that scene or object, et cetera. This study challenged that idea and raised the hypothesis that if people are allowed to choose what they take photos of, that taking photos, again, this is with a camera, not mental snapshotting, that taking those photos would actually enhance their memory for those objects, those places, those people, and in fact, details of those object places and people. And indeed, that's what they found. So in contrast to previous studies where people had been more or less told, take photos of these following objects or these following people or these following places. And then they were given a memory test at some point later. In this study, people were given volitional control, right? They were given agency in making the decision of what to take photos of. And I'll just summarize the results. We'll provide a link to this study. I should say that some of the stuff that they tested was actually pretty challenging. Um, some of them were uh, pottery and other forms of ceramics that um, are of the sort that you see if you go to a big museum in a big city. And if you've ever done that and you see all the different objects, there are a lot of details in those objects. And a lot of those objects look a lot alike. And so, you know, some will have two handles. Some will have one handle. The position of the handles, how, how broad or narrow these things are. You know, a lot of this is pretty detailed stuff. They also took photos of other, uh, other things. So basically what they found was that if people take pictures of things and they choose which things they're taking pictures of, right? It's up to them. It's volitional that there's enhanced memory for those objects later on. However, it degraded their ability to remember auditory information. So what this means is that when we take a picture of something or a person, we are stamping down a visual memory of that thing. And that makes sense. It's a photograph after all, but we are actually inhibiting our ability to remember the auditory, the sound components of that visual scene or what the person was saying. Very interesting and points to the fact that the visual system can outcompete the auditory system, at least in terms of how the hippocampus is encoding this information. The other finding I find particularly interesting within this study is that it didn't matter whether or not they ever looked at the photos again. 
So they actually had people take photos or not take photos of different objects. They had some people keep their photos and they had other people delete their photos. And turns out that whether or not people kept the photos or deleted those photos had no bearing on whether or not they were better or worse at remembering things. They were always better at remembering them as compared to not taking photos of them. What does this mean? It means if you really want to remember something or somebody, take a photo of that thing or person, pay attention while you take the photo, but it doesn't really matter if you look at the photo again. Somehow the process of taking that photo, probably looking at it, you know, in a camera, typically we'd say through the viewfinder or now because of digital cameras on the, on the screen on the back of that camera or on your phone, that framing up of the photograph stamps down a visual image in your mind that is more robust at serving a memory than had you just looked at that thing with your own eyes. Very interesting and it raises all sorts of questions for me about whether or not it's because you're framing up a small aperture, a small portion of the visual scene. That's one logical interpretation, although they didn't test that. I should also say that they found that whether or not you looked at a photo that you took or whether or not you deleted it and never looked at it again, didn't just enhance visual memory or the or the memory for those for the visual components of that image, but it always reduced your ability to remember sounds associated with that experience. So that's interesting. And then last but not least, and perhaps most interesting, at least to me, was the fact that you didn't even need a camera to see this effect. If subjects looked at something and took a mental photograph of that thing, it enhanced their visual memory of that thing significantly more than had they not taken a mental picture. In fact, it increased their memory of that thing almost as much as taking an actual photograph with an actual camera. And the reason I find this so interesting is that a lot of what we try and learn is visual. And for a lot of people, the ability to learn visual information feels challenging. And we'll look at something and we'll try and create some detailed understanding of it. We'll try and understand the relationships between things in that scene. It does appear based on the study that the mere decision to take a mental snapshot, like, okay, I'm going to blink my eyelids and I'm going to take a snapshot of whatever it is I see can actually stamp down a visual memory much in the same way that a camera can stamp down a visual memory. Of course, through 